Becky and today I'm going to be doing the Neopets book tag. I decided to create this tag because whenever I'm in a bad mood I always turn to kind of nostalgic childhood things whether that's binge watching Scooby-Doo movies, rereading old favourites or even playing games like Neopets. I was in a particularly bad mood the other week and I was playing Neopets and I was like how do I incorporate this into some content in some way because I know loads of people feel the exact same way in that nostalgic feel for Neopets. So I've decided to create a book tag and hopefully you'll enjoy it. I tag everyone who wants to get involved really and um, hope you like my answers as well as my questions. So if you've watched any of my previous videos you'll know that I love fantasy books and I love exploring lots of different worlds. One of the key things I remember loving about Neopets as a child was that there were so many different places to look at and so many places to explore and find new things to do. So I decided that for this book tag we were going to focus on the different places in Neopia and hopefully you'll recognise some of them, hopefully you'll recognise most of them actually and hopefully you'll get some good book recs out of it as well. First up we have Neopia Central and the question is what is a book that has a bustling city full of secrets for a reader to uncover? Whilst the art style of Neopia Central isn't a bustling city at all, when you think of things like how many shops are in that marketplace you really do get the impression that there's going to be filled with Neopets whenever you're there. So I wanted to pick a book that kind of emulated this feeling and I also wanted to pick books that maybe had a little hint of magic to the city itself as with Neopia Central that's where the money tree is, the wishing well and it's kind of just a magical place for kids to go and explore. So I actually picked two books for this one. The first one is Feather Tide, which is a book I've read really recently actually and it has our main character travel across to this city filled with kind of where dreams come true and I really enjoyed the description of the city. There was always something happening in the city whether or not it was to our main character or to the people she sees or knows. The city itself isn't totally magical in that it looks and feels like a very average place at first but there's a very magical vibe to it which is how everyone is drawn into the city and to do things that they wouldn't normally do if they weren't there and that's why it's kind of called a city where dreams happen. Um, I thought this was the best way to describe kind of the childhood magical feel of Neopia Central and I really enjoyed the book as well so I'd highly recommend it. The second book is also a book that the first book reminded me of and that was City of Circles and I really enjoyed this book because it's very focused on the city that it's based in. This city is in kind of concentric circles and each of the different circles will move to a different kind of setting as based on levers. But I, ha I don't really remember much about the book but I remember really vividly a scene right at the beginning where there's kind of a city street full of people at a festival and there's spices being thrown up in the air and it's really busy and our main character is just kind of completely enamoured with the city. I really think it would emulate the feelings you get when you think of nostalgia and happiness. Uh, next up we are visiting Fairyland and the, the question for this one is what is a book that takes you into the home of fairies in some way? Um, if you can't tell by my fantasy obsession I enjoyed fairies when I was growing up and I really enjoyed visiting Fairyland whenever I was on Neopets. It was probably my favourite place on the site. However I think my book tastes definitely catered towards more of a dark fairy than any of the other fairies in Neopets. The first book I'm going to pick is Tithe which is by Holly Black and I read it when I was a lot younger but I really enjoyed reading it. I don't really remember what happened in it because I read it so long ago but I remember that after I read it I just wanted to read all the books with Faye in it that I could get my hands on. It's probably one of the first books I read that included kind of the unseely and seely books and I just really enjoyed that there was a place that the fairies went that we couldn't quite get to or if we did get to we probably couldn't come back from. And then another book series that I remember which also includes the unseely and seely courts is the Iron Fae series by Julie Kagawa. Again I really enjoyed this series and it's one of those books I picked up not long after the first one and I read all of them pretty quickly after that but again I really enjoyed that it had different courts and different places 
but I also enjoyed that it modernised it a bit and they created their kind of iron court in the books as well. Next up we're visiting the haunted woods and the brain tree would like to ask you what is a book that has scared you? Now I am a massive baby when it comes to horror books. I don't really read much and I get scared really easily especially as I live on my own now so scaring myself is probably never the best idea. However I remember when I was younger I probably wasn't even that young but I read Coraline and I'd already watched the film so I thought it was going to be okay but the book I swear is 10 times scarier and I completely freaked myself out, I couldn't sleep for a, a whole night and I've, I managed to scare myself um, quite, quite a lot by Coraline as I wasn't expecting it to be as creepy as it was. And of course that probably fits in right in the deserted fairground or if you're going to Edna's Tower. Next we're going to go find some wisdom in Brightvale and I always love Brightvale because it seems like a really nice kind of medieval place. Medieval castle with lots of like books and scrolls and I, my question for this is who is your favourite character who is a scholar, student or reader? For me it would definitely be Aaron Draper in the Tempest and Slaughter book which I really enjoyed. I enjoyed that in this book. I believe it's actually a prequel series so we do see him all grown up at some point but I haven't read that book. But I enjoyed that throughout the book it kind of shows what a brilliant student Aram is and how he genuinely wants to learn and it's not just a training montage. And then another book is the Epic Crush of Jeannie Lowe series. In both the books Jeannie is particularly studious, she wants to do well in school and she actually wants to learn a lot about both school and her newfound powers in the book. So basically I just really like, I really like kind of students that actually want to learn things and aren't just being forced to. I don't want a Harry Potter or a Ron Weasley who doesn't really care about learning, I want someone who wants to learn. Next we're gonna hop over the river to Meridale and this is a medieval castle still but it's a lot more fun I would say. Uh, Meridale is full of more sporty activities I would say, there's archery, cheese rolling and there's even a kiss the mortog which isn't really a sport but I'm going to class it as one of the activities. <laughs> and I would like to know what is your favourite medieval style fantasy world? And if you're not a fantasy reader what, what is your favourite book which is set in a medieval time? Honestly the first place I could think of for this question was Westeros from the A Song of Ice and Fire series and I think I've got it on the nose there, like George Martin has said he is really inspired by medieval history and he uses a lot of influences in his work so I'm quite happy with that answer. Next up we're going to take a ship to Cork Island and so the question is what is a book that includes pirates? The latest book I read was Viper by Beth Hogan and I really adored it despite the fact that the pirates weren't really your traditional pirates as they were in control by someone else but Marianne is a brilliant character and she'd probably feel right at home in the Swashbuckling Academy and I'm really excited to read the next book in that series as well and it's just reminded me that I need to grab it and get it and read it. Then we have Altador and it's Hall of Heroes and my question to you is who is your favourite book character who is a hero as I want to know who you would probably fit into the Hall of Heroes. For me I kept thinking lots of different things because technically a lot of main characters are classed as heroes but the one character that kept coming to mind was Yumiko from the Shadow of the Fox series as by the end of the series she's really sacrificed a lot in order for the greater good and to save the world basically despite losing a lot of the things that she holds dear and I think that was a true hero quality because despite all this she doesn't really give up and she really does work hard at saving as many people as she can. Next we're going to head up to the Lunar Temple in Shenku and the wise Noru is going to ask you what is an Asian inspired book that you've read recently? For me that would have been the Shadow of the Fox series but I don't want to duplicate so I'm going to go with the I'm, so I'm going to go with the Wolf of Oranyaro which is southeastern Asian inspired I believe. I believe it's based very heavily on kind of the Philippines. I adored this book mainly for its main character, also named the Bitch Queen, and 
I just really enjoyed all of the different places we discovered and the world building around the different cultures of different places. Next up we're visiting Kiko Lake and we want to know then we visit Kiko Lake and the question is what is a book that is mainly set on water? I know I created the questions but I found this question to be particularly difficult because I completely forgot all the books on my bookshelf. However, when I think of being on water I think of boats and when I think of boats I think of Vikings. So I managed to figure out that Beyond a Darkened Shore was on water quite a lot. I haven't read it in a while so I can't remember if it was mainly on water so this might be a false answer. But I do know that in the second book they do turn up on a boat as well so I do believe I have a good chance of being right. In Beyond a Darkened Shore I really love the use of Norse and Celtic mythology and all the different parts of the different mythology fitting together when you would think it probably wouldn't. Next we're going to launch into space and visit Crelidor which is the moon of Neopia and is the only place on this list that isn't actually in Neopia. But I would like to know what book did you like that was based mainly on a spaceship? For me I just finished Seven Devils last week and I really enjoyed reading it and they were mostly on the ship, particularly in all of the great scenes where the relationships between different characters were developing, whether that was the found family or more romantic relationships and I just really enjoyed all the characters and the overall plot line. There are so many books when you're traveling but have you ever traveled up Terror Mountain? And if so, is there any books where you're traveling up a mountain as well? Immediately when I thought of what books have mountains in it, I thought of Mount Doom and The Lonely Mountain from The Hobbit. And seeing as we're talking all about nostalgia here, it would be best to include The Hobbit at least once as it is my favorite childhood book. But then if I want a more recent read as well, I also read The White Road, which is a book about climbing Mount Everest and is a psychological thriller. I'd really recommend it to anyone who likes like a proper scary thriller as there's some um, parts where it's pretty spooky as well and you are climbing throughout the majority of the book. After braving the cold ice of Terra Mountain we're going to go visit the Lost Desert to have some sun and I want to know what book have you read that includes a desert? For me I read We Hunt the Flame not that long ago and as soon as our main character kind of goes on her quest we're stuck on this island that is mostly desert. We Hunt the Flame as a whole is very Arabian inspired which is very visible from the first page and I really enjoyed the characters and the story as well. Next up we have Tyrania and the question for this is what is a book that you've read that is set in kind of the stone ages? Originally this place was going to have the question of a book with dinosaurs but then I realised I don't think I've ever read a book with dinosaurs in it and I assumed after googling it that most people haven't either and I'm not really sure why dinosaurs aren't in more books but maybe they should be however for a book set in the stone age I'm going to pick the Chronicles of Ancient Darkness series which I read when I was a lot younger honestly I could not remember much about this book I had to actually google a book with kind of cave writing drawings on the cover and this came up and I remembered it from the book cover but I do know it was set in kind of a stone age period and this this question fully tripped me up um, despite me writing the questions so yeah if, you, if you've read any books that are in the stone age please do do this tag to let me know but also please comment any books that you've read that have dinosaurs in it because I could not think of any and the only one that really came up was Jurassic Park. And then we all love a good mystery on Mystery Island so what is a good book that has a gripping mystery? I feel like I haven't read a proper mystery book in so long but I remember reading Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle and I really enjoyed that mystery because I couldn't guess what was going to happen and it really shocked me when I found out the ending. Plus it was a little bit fantasy as well which always helps me because I love fantasy books. Then we're going to dive into Miracqua and my question for you is what is a book that has an underwater city? For me I could only really think of To Kill a Kingdom which whilst most of the book isn't set under the sea we do visit kingdoms both under and over water so I think that counts <laughs> but I would love to read more so please do let me know in the comments if you can think of any more books for this or any books that you know I've read that I've definitely missed. 
And last but not least, we have the hidden Lutari Island. And we all love a good mystery. But do you have any books which have kind of lost or secret cities? For me, I'm going to duplicate from the beginning, and that is Feather Tide, which does have literally has a floating city that is kind of lost and can't be found by our main characters. But then I also thought of The Toll, which is the third book in the Ark of the Sky series. And this also has a kind of secret city which people don't know about. And I really enjoyed that aspect of the book. I don't really want to spoil anything for either of those books. So I'm not going to go into any more detail. So yeah, that's all the questions. If you want to do this tag, I'm going to leave all the questions in the description below. And there's also a written tag if you want to do this as a blog post instead. But I tag anyone who wants to take part as I know so many people love Neopets growing up and it's probably one of the first ways we started using HTML for blogging and stuff. So I don't know if that's just me, please let me know if you also did that. And a really big thank you for watching to the end of this video and I will see you again soon.